When I first joined SK, it was with Wicked, Snoopy, Ocelot. It was really fun back then. I think we were like top three in the world. We had like a really good period at the start of season three, the spring splits, where we like really worked hard as a team and you could really feel the team spirit. But it fell apart like really quickly and we ended up splitting. We like patched work a team together, but it worked out in the end pretty well actually. They are gonna continue the top of the table charge and what an immense turnaround for SK Gaming. By chance, I feel like we found out what was important and we just like did that over and over again and no one could, could like figure out what we were doing. We qualified for Worlds, but it didn't work in the end. We went out in group stage at Worlds. Everyone was disappointed and we had to make some changes. I just said that I need a break and I need to like refocus and motivate myself again. I went to Sweden at the start of New Year and I went there to my girlfriend to spend some time there, do a break. Unseat SK Gaming! They win the 50 minute fight! That's how we do it. I watched the playoffs, like pretty much every game. And when I watched SK play, it felt like good on the one side to see them lose because I knew that there was a chance I could maybe join them. And if they lose, you know, it's more chance that they might swap a player. But on the other side, it felt really bad because. I, I like to see my old teammates win and I don't know, it, it felt like good and bad at the same time. Sven told me as well, like one time, why don't you start playing again, like you should really start playing again. I was like, why would he say that? Like It became clear that we could fit back together again in summer split and I really worked towards that. It was clear to me that I want to go back to escape. I knew the players, I was good friends with them even though I wasn't in the team anymore and uh, it just fit perfectly. There was really no better choice than SK at the time. This time around, I've definitely something to prove, especially replacing Forgiven. And it's just about like working hard. It's not like some magic trick, it's just playing a lot of games, having dedication and having good team atmosphere. And I feel like we can easily get that and we can be a good team. Yeah, and Candy Pan has said he had to uh, do a lot to match Forgiven, but so far he's doing exactly that, but just not in the way that he had hoped. Yeah, maybe not. Definitely needing some time to ramp up there, Candy Panda, as well. Now, before we look at the reunited SK Gaming squad, we're going to check out their opponents, Giants, who are setting up on the blue side in today's game with Whirlip, Frederick, Pepinero, Audrey, Godfred, and Lozarak. And as already said, in the beginning of the show, a marked improvement, as we see, for the Giants, another victory yesterday. And we looked at the stats of their run in the Spring Split, where they also got two victories in the initial week. And the biggest difference there, they got carried by Warlips Jax. And yesterday, Audrey actually also did 30% of his team's damage in that team, while in the Spring Split in the first two games, that was only 13%. So it does seem that they are expanding their threats. Yeah, they're suffering from the Godfrey effect right now, or Godfred, Godfred, <laughs> Godfred effect. Thank you for correcting me there. Yeah. Um, obviously, yeah, change that bot lane dynamic just a little bit. Uh, wasn't working with Rydal, uh, not necessarily one's fault or the other, but they just wanted a little more synergy, a little more aggression, and it's exactly what he brought with all those bindings, and quite a few of them. 20 KDA, as we saw yesterday, fantastic performance, and looking for more. I want to see how he evolves, uh, plays other champions than Morgana, see if nerves get to him when the game gets close, has to make deciding plays, but so far, so good. Yeah, and also echoing here when he was on the desk with Whirlip after their victory that he calls a lot of the shots. They are transitioning into English, of course. And uh, I think that's just a, a good evolution overall for them. And I said Whirlip as well on the desk saying, I don't like to play Maokai. And I feel like uh, top laners in general often have this kind of, I don't like playing this meta, I don't like this. But it's just something that you have to adjust to. Yeah, when Maokai is such a staple pick, so strong in the meta game, 100% pink ban, if I recall correctly, as well. Before this weekend, at least, you... You just have to be able to play him because he's. you can pick him early, you can pick him into most stuff. He works well with many team comps, such a solid champion. And Rolope definitely, or Rolope delivered 
Yep. Uh, even if he didn't want to, it didn't look like he didn't want to, at least. Yeah, hashtag free Maokai. Well, uh, up on the red side is a team that qualified for the 2014 World Championship. SK Gaming, Freddy122, Sven Scare, and Fox, Candy Panda, and Rated, and their coach, Lukas Schenke. Well, yesterday, the game versus OG, not very pleasant to look at from uh, for their perspective. Although they did get two dragons early, so not all bad, but OG just way too strong for SK Gaming in that Yeah, capacity. definitely outmatched in both in, in it seemed in terms of individual skill as well as synergy. Candy Panda we saw in the feature was doing uh, the best of his teammates uh, while everybody was failing. He still did relatively well in previous games as well. So so far he has been doing well. But he just needs to translate it into a team environment. Everybody needs to start rolling and two of the members that I felt were disappointing. Freddy and Svenskeren. Yeah, uh, need to echo that as well because those are the players that we looked at uh, at the end of the, the split as well for Svenskeren looking at or carrying SK there on his Lee Sin. Freddy always having good stats throughout the, the rest of the season, or last season rather. And that's really weird that those two players seem to have not found their footing. How much does that have to do with maybe champion picks or maybe just SK as a whole having kind of an identity crisis and having to find a new strategic outlook on the game? I mean, I think it all ties in together. And we yeah. saw the result on that Nidalee game for Svenskeren last week as well. Kept trying to clear those wards, kept trying to go in. He was playing like a tank, but he wasn't playing one, so he got caught and died over and over again. And Origin did the same thing to SK. He died 10 times in his game as Evelyn, and yeah, just, just didn't work out. And then Freddy, if we go back to Worlds, last time everybody was applauding Fre yeah. Freddy for being the one European top laner that really showed up there, and such a solid player, got target bans towards him, played phenomenally, but he's just, he's just a, f a shade of his former self right now, and I want him to get back to that level because he can be such a fantastic player. Yeah, absolutely, for uh, Sven as well. Um, someone who has been doing good, but it's kind of been kept under the radar because the team has been doing good, is uh, Fox, actually, in that mid lane. Azir and Cassidy in last week, a high output of his team's damage, 36%, I believe, yesterday as well. He has a good Azir play, he has good play overall, but it's just a team environment as of now that doesn't seem to be able to work with it. Yeah, if you're stuck playing Cassidy in, uh, in the draft, Say your coach tells you to play it and you pick it, you, you do what you can, but eventually if everybody's losing around you, you need time to scale. If you're playing a scaling pick and you, your team is losing the mid to early game, you might want to switch up that, that pick or uh, yeah, try some, some bold moves, but it just wasn't enough. Fox played solid, but he couldn't, he couldn't break out of that mold uh, that SK Gaming had made so far and see how his performance evolves in this game. Yeah, we will see. Uh, if we look at the game of the, or the early games, we did saw from Giants uh, last week, they are pretty good at the objective game early, but they die a lot. Uh, they need an escape plan. They need an escape plan, an escape plan, an escape plan. We'll see what they decide uh -huh. to go with. With the teams all set on stage, we're going to kick it over to our casters and get into the game. Thank you very much, Shox and Crepo. And joining me on the caster desk is James Stress O'Leary, who is warming up for the European Challenger Series, which will get back into gear very, very soon. It will do, but it's time for some LCS action right here with Giants versus SK. And this is an interesting matchup because you look at uh, previous seasons, you'd expect SK to have the favor, but Giants, I would say, maybe even heavily favored going into this one. I think based off the three games we've seen thus far in Summer Split, that's fair to say, especially with how good Giants looked against Elements yesterday. Very decisive, very strong Pepinero on that Diana 1v1ing Froggen's Victor. We are loading up into Picks and Bands. It is Giants on the 